Students, have you ever gone to the doctor when you were little and you scraped your knee? And you do a good job there. You don't cry too much. Mom and dad are proud of you. The nurse comes out because you're doing so well and he or she gives you colorful stickers. Has that ever happened to anybody in here? <laughs> it's happened to me as well. Well, for this next active learning strategy, guess what? You're going to be using colorful round stickers. And what's it called? Well, it's called colorful round stickers. <laughs> Are you ready to have some fun and learn the process? Yeah. All right. I need you to review your notes on the Bill of Rights. And you can also look in your textbook on pages 250 and 251 because there's some great information on the Bill of Rights in there as well. So go ahead, open up your notebooks. Open up your textbooks. And please review that information. Students love stickers. Okay, these stickers may not be as cool as the ones with cartoon characters and action heroes on them that our students receive from the dentist or doctor's office, but they can still be a lot of fun and very educational. Your students will get stuck on colorful round stickers. This strategy works well when you want to learn how your class feels about an important topic. I also use this strategy when I want my students to rank order important people, ideas, items, or events. Following a lecture or large group discussion, and once students have finished reading the textbook or reviewing their notes, I roll out a large sheet of butcher paper and have students jot down key terms and their definitions related to a specific set of subtopics, such as the Bill of Rights, Green Technologies, types of speeches including informative, demonstrative, and persuasive, or whatever items are appropriate for your content area. This can even be done the day before as a means of getting your students excited about tomorrow's activity. Sometimes I assign cooperative groups to be responsible for one or more subtopics. Or sometimes students that have finished all required work may be asked to go into the hallway for the purpose of writing information on the butcher paper, which, incidentally, they love to do. Sometimes I write all necessary information on the paper and have it displayed as my students come into the room. Then I can use the paper as a visually engaging prop. Use this technique following the daisy wheel strategy. Now that the information has been placed upon the paper, your students will rank order its importance using the stickers. The possibilities are limitless. Students, great job generating a list of the amendments. Now how many amendments are in the Bill of Rights? It's the first? Ten. Ten. Absolutely. I like how you kept it brief with your definitions for each of the amendments. I also love the symbolism, the trial by jury in this case, legal documents under search and seizure, and freedoms under the First Amendment. Well done. So now I'm going to call you up one row at a time. Haley, I think I'm going to start with your role. The other rows, you can be reviewing your notes right now, up until the time that I call you. Be thinking about which amendments you think are the most important. All right, Haley, I want you to take your roll and place those stickers on the three amendments you guys think are the most important. All right, next row. crucial, especially for students and teachers, is freedom of 
what? Speech. 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 And that certainly is embedded right in Amendment 1. On the other end, students, with the least amount of stickers, and I'm a bit surprised by this, is the Quartering Act. It only has one. And maybe that's because you're not affected by it. For instance, when you go home at night and you walk into your kitchen, you don't see a member of the Air Force standing there. When you go into your living room, there's not a member of the Marines on your couch. When you go into the bathroom, you don't have a Navy SEAL in your bathtub. <laughs> and that's because of Amendment 3, the Quartern of Troops. Well, what was happening prior to the American Revolutionary War? What was King George III and Parliament doing in the 13 colonies? Putting soldiers in private what? Homes. Homes. Absolutely. So we shouldn't be surprised that in the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, this amendment states you can't put soldiers in private homes. They remembered their history. On a large sheet of butcher paper, I might list the crucial happenings in a novel. Environmental interventions, animal hierarchy, order of operations, or numerous other possibilities. I will supply my students with three stickers. The colors have no bearing. I certainly can review the information written on the butcher paper as they hold their stickers. This is an important point. Like so many other strategies, I utilize the student's anticipation for the activity to work in additional explanation or review. I definitely have their attention because they are excited about what will happen next, and we cannot get to the next thing until the review is complete. When it comes to placing stickers, you might have your students commit to three choices by writing them down their notebooks. Then, with notebooks in hand, the students must duplicate their choices using stickers. This prevents students from being influenced by what their classmates have decided. Use the colorful round sticker strategy with cooperative groups. Allow group members to debate and discuss what is most important before placing stickers on the butcher paper. You will see an example of this shortly with Mike, a past student teacher of mine. Instead of the entire group placing stickers upon the butcher paper, each group could select one representative. Select four to six students randomly from your entire class to place stickers or choose one entire role. As I go around the room, I will respectfully ask my students if they want stickers so they can participate. Occasionally, students will decline for a variety of reasons. As always, I never force them. I explain tactfully if they should change their minds during this strategy, I will certainly be accommodating and give them a set of stickers. Simply placing stickers on butcher paper is quite easy, and even my most challenging or reluctant students will generally partake in this strategy. If not, I allow them to sit and I do this activity anyway. Okay class, over the past few days we've been reading some excerpts from some great books and we've been talking a lot about the six traits of writing. And the trait that we've been talking the most about is voice. And since we're going to be talking about voice today, I want to review what exactly voice is. So let's talk about four questions that you should consider. Uh, first, does the writer clearly express his or her thoughts? Second, is the writer's point of view clear? Third, does the writing address its audience? And lastly, has the writer added a unique personal touch to the piece? Today we're going to use a sticker method to try and see which of these books has the best example of voice. Alright, I'm about to put you into your groups, but before I do, I want to talk about what it is exactly we're going to do with these stickers. Now I'm going to walk around and I want to hear you thoughtfully discussing these excerpts. Again, which one is the best example of voice? Now at the end of your discussion, you might decide as a group to put your sticker on one of these books. Or you might not be able to come to a consensus on which book is the best example, in which case you can divide up and put it on separate books. That's perfectly okay. Student drama, long-held grudges, frustrations of all types will certainly go a long way to limit a student's ability to learn. As educators, we're not helped by the world of reality television. 
which features aggressive and sometimes violent interactions between cast members. Our students are inundated with a false sense of how to deal appropriately with friends, family members, and even teachers. One technique I use is to make my students aware of how they need to stop focusing upon and relentlessly reliving incidents between them and their classmates. I ask my students not to relive the negative occurrences that are part of every adolescent's life, but in its place, try to focus more of your energies on what you can control. Simply stated, and a strong visual for our students, is to say, don't constantly relive, but instead reset. Start anew and go forward. Whatever seemed to be so troubling before may seem less daunting now. Again, don't relive, but instead reset. Okay, class. You passed the time to discuss these excerpts, and now it's time to make a decision. I do want to remind you that when you go up, the stickers should go on the poster and not on the blackboard, okay? <laughs> All right. Let's start with Patrick's group. So you see that Patrick's group did not all agree. They could not come to a consensus on which book was the best example of uh, voice. So let's see what uh, Dustin's group had to say. She experienced everything that she did, so therefore, there is a lot of voice in the book. Good. As we kick off our science unit on saving the planet, or as you have entitled it, Think Green, I'm very encouraged by the categories that all of you have come up with. Now here's what I'd like you to do. I've given you each five stickers. And I want you to come up and I want you to place those next to the topic that you know the least about. If you'd like, you can take multiple stickers and put them in the same area. Or you can take the five and you can spread them out. It's up to you. But as your teacher, it's going to help me determine what we need to study where I need to put more emphasis and time. Does everybody understand what I want you to do? Yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, so gently lift yourselves up. Think for yourselves. Don't worry about what other people are putting up there. And put them in the areas that you know the least about. 